Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and today I want to show you um, a really nice, relaxing project to do with brush pens. Now, these are Royal Talons Eco Line brush pens, and they are specifically designed for hand lettering. But as I may have mentioned to you before, my hand lettering doesn't worth, it isn't worth even reading, let alone doing a demonstration of. So I thought, well, do you know what? There's such lovely colours in this pack, I'm going to come up with another idea. Now, anyone that knows me comes around my house and there are random feathers just poked in flower pots and jars of pens. Because if I go for a walk and I find an attractive feather, I'll pick it up. I've got some nice green woodpecker ones here, which from a, the demise of a green woodpecker. They're just nice, tactile, but also beautifully patterned bits of nature. And they're great for inspiration if you want to draw your own feathers, like I've done here. Now I've found the trick to drawing feathers is just to have a certain amount of guideline to work to, so you don't get carried away. So what I've done is I've done you some very simple templates, which will be in the description below, so you can download them yourself. I've actually cut them out of coloured card this time, so you can see what I'm drawing around. And use a smooth white card. Let's just trim that down a bit because I don't need a whole A4 sheet. And then select your feather template. I'm going to use this one. Pop it in the middle of the card. And you don't have to draw around this um, religiously. It is just to give you the shape of a feather. So you've got a guideline to work to. Now because these are a dye-based pen, I believe, and they're water soluble, once they're dried, it does mean that you can rub those pencil marks out afterwards. The only other thing I would suggest is that you draw the spine or the, the quill of your pet feather down there. And now you can be begin to create your feather. Now I'm going to do, um, I think, a blue and green one with perhaps a little bit of grey and maybe a touch of pink. And in this pen set, there's a blender pen, which is essentially a water pen. Now, this does look as if it's coloured at the minute. That's because I've been blending with it. But you can just make sure there's no excess of colour by wiping it out on a piece of tissue. That's all right, that will get hidden. So we'll start with the green. And you want to choose a way that flows for you because you want the thickest part of your nib to be near the quill and tapering off at the edge of the feather. So we'll just put this on here sideways and taper it off. Taper it off. And find an angle that's comfortable for you. Let's change the colours. Put some dark blue in there. And a little bit of grey. And don't worry too much about that central line of the feather at the minute. Because we're going to come back to that. And this is where the blender comes in. So we have these colours and you've got a lot of white space. If you take a coloured pen and you just put the tip to the tip of the blender, it will suck up ink from this pen but it won't be as strong as the pen itself. So you can just stroke on some other hints of colour in there. And I don't want too much pink in there because the feather is predominantly red and green.
and let's just get rid of that. And you can do the same with the other colours to fill in that background. And it does seem to work better if you just put the tips together rather than rolling the entire pen nib together. It is the tip that seems to be the, the most, um, I don't really know how to describe it. It gives up the ink much, much better than the rest of the pen. Just going to put a couple of little feathery bits here. And I might just put one little dark feathery bit. So you can see that the, uh, although it's quite a thick, juicy nib, if you just apply light pressure to it, you can get quite a fine line. I'll just put some green on there. And then just add some green shading. Over the grey. And next to the pink. And don't be tempted to overwork it. There is water in this blender pen. And if you're using a paper that's not designed for waterproofing or, or not designed to be waterproof, you will find that the paper surface might start to tear and that will spoil your whole design. I mean, it's not insurmountable. I did tear one of these designs as I rubbed it out. You can just get a glue stick underneath it and flatten it back down again. But again, that's a story for another day. And then what I have also found, and this is why you need to let this dry before you move on, before you rub your pencil lines out. So I'm taking a bit of a risk here. But as long as I don't rub too much, I think I'll be safe. Um, Sakura gel pens, metallic Sakura gel pens, are really nice for adding detail to these cards. And you can use them in a sketchy fashion. And this is why it doesn't matter quite so much about that central line of your feather because you're going to cover it up with a metallic pen. If you don't have, have any of these, you can, of course, just run a line of a darker shade of brush pen down there. But to carry on metallic theme, it's also quite nice just to put a few feathery lines out. Like so. And then also just to add some little dots of metallics to soften up those really dark colours. And these are great ideas for greetings cards. Now, I'm not going to embarrass myself by putting some illegible hand lettering on the bottom of this, but you can do what you like with it and create cards like this. The other thing is also, if you've got ink on your blender pen, you can always just sit and practice drawing something freehand
And this is a much looser design. And as you can see, because the brush is wet, the paint here is spreading. This actually looks more like a Bob Roth tree than a feather. It's a much more watery watercolour design. And then you can just add some detailing, again with a gel pen. But the outcome of your feather will depend on how quickly you work, how wet you work, and what intensity of colour you use. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. I hope that's given you a reason to start drawing again if you haven't done it for a long, long time. Because there is something really charming about being able to produce something that is original and made by yourself in beautiful colours that you can then gift to a friend. Come and see us again very, very soon. We'll have lots more ideas to keep you busy. Uh, until then, please keep safe. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click 